Uh, item two is public participation. Uh, you've all had your list of public speakers uh, tonight, and they're allowed three minutes each. And the first one tonight is Ella Lemon um, from Highfields. Are you happy to go first? We're we doing a spot, that's, all right. that's absolutely fine. So well, that's I quite understand. So Laura Stevens from the Derbyshire Climate Coalition is going to have her three minutes first to make a statement on the proposal of Motion B, which is also in your papers on the existential threat of climate change. Uh, Laura, you have three minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my name's Laura Stevens. Is the mic on? Press, is press on? the mic on, yeah. Oh, it is now. Thank very you. good. Um, yes, uh, thank you for having me. Um, I would like to speak on behalf of Derbyshire Climate Coalition, which campaigns to raise awareness of climate change and includes a wide range of groups from transition towns to the CPRE. We are here in support of the motion to declare a climate emergency, which will be presented to you tonight. Of course, you will have heard of and maybe listened to Greta Thunberg, 16-year-old Swedish activist, when she addressed the UN or the UK Parliament. She says it how it is. She says our leaders are not mature enough to tell it how it is and that they are too scared of being unpopular. We know we are in a climate, climate crisis, the scientists tell us. David Attenborough tells us. But Greta says that you'd surely see the signs of the work climate crisis and no one's talking about it. No one is acting like we're in a crisis. We have to wake up and change. We know how to solve the climate crisis. And once we start to act, there will be hope. <clears throat> but we need all our leaders to act. And you all here tonight have the power, as leaders, to make important decisions. So when your grandchildren ask you in the future what you did to combat climate change, what will you say? Close to 90 councils across the country of every political persuasion have declared a climate emergency, from Oxford to Manchester to Scarborough. In so doing, they commit to cutting carbon and working with businesses and communities to achieve set targets. Councils have a key role in tackling climate change, from engaging the public to in integrating climate change into town planning. Although radical action is required to bring about change, councils can do a great deal to change attitudes without too much work. Public awareness campaigns work a treat. Attitudes have been changed and habits can be learned quickly when it's the right thing to do. Just as I would like, oh, just as, <clears throat> sorry, just as we always wear seatbelts now, Perhaps we can learn to turn the car or engine off when sitting in traffic. Cut carbon emissions and air pollution, which you'll know is seriously problematic. So, as leaders, we ask that you lead the way in the Derbyshire Dales and make some important changes. Do we have uh, charging points for electric vehicles, for example? Um, show willing, change attitudes, mm declare a climate emergency. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, call upon Ella uh, to, to go, go next. So you've got three minutes. Uh, just press the button so it goes green. Okay. Okay, so. Very good. Um, a few weeks ago, I was present at the county council meeting on the road. And I was disappointed with not only the result, but also with the manner in which the climate crisis was discussed. First and foremost, this is an emergency. This morning, scientists would, had issued a report saying that puffins were becoming endangered because of rising sea temperatures. And there's plenty more evidence to suggest that we are the reason that species are dying out. Living in rural Derbyshire, we feel the effects of climate change a lot less than others, although we can definitely agree that the climate change um, crisis will become more of an issue for, um, for us locally in the future. The climate crisis is a massive threat and we need to stand in solidarity with each other to help save the planet. This involves putting our political differences aside 
and, pu and pushing for unity in order to come up with solutions. We need to keep in mind that this is a global emergency and fighting with each other is not going to solve the issue. Listening to Caroline Lucas, um, the Green Party, on the way here, she said that actions speak louder than words. So hopefully, when we've declared a climate um, declared a climate emergency as a district council, um, we remember that actions alongside we remember the actions alongside the words. Declaring the emergency will be the first step, but if we want to stop the stop the people from Norfolk in, in, from invading, as I heard a set friend say recently when discussing the topic, and of course I am joking, um, <laughs> we must also um, follow up with our actions. My granny, who trains as a statistician, often says that um, one plus one equals many, and I hope you all agree with me um, that is that rings very true tonight. As even though our local MP said that his one plastic straw probably won't make a difference, I'd beg to differ. Thank you, uh, thank you very much. And, and, and lastly, George Davidson has three minutes again from a Highfield uh, student on the same motion. Hello, my name is George Davidson. And I'm here as a member of the Youth Parliament for the Derbyshire Dales, a member of the Youth Council representing Highfield, a um, ambassador for Aquabox, and but most importantly, a member of the youth who've been involved in climate striking recently. And it's my opinion, and I believe it should be the opinions of everyone gathered here today, that climate change is an existential threat. And obviously, big issue is that if nothing is done, we become extinct by 2050. That is something that everyone should be very, very aware of, and it's quite glaring, and it's the fact that it's the end of the human race as we know it, and all of that. But I think we need to look into the near future rather than, comparatively, the far future. By 2030, we're past the point of no return. That's a fact that is proved by scientists. And this, although it may not feel like it will affect us, it will affect us in some small way. It will affect many people across the globe. And even at the moment, it affects people. Uh, National Geographic says that soon uh, 143 million people will become climate migrants. To those who don't really know what climate migrants are, because I didn't really until recently, they're people who've been displaced from their homes, from their countries, by climate change. For instance, rising sea levels mean that your house, which you lived in for, say, 9 and 30 years, no longer exists. You have to move. You, know, you can't live where you lived in the past. And currently, from uh, the way our country is, um, we have uh, issues with migrants at the moment because, because of the way that that's governed. And regardless of your opinion on that, you can agree that the conditions that they have been forced to spend in uh, around Calais, uh, when trying to get into different countries is atrocious, and this is an effect on their existence. Um, as a result, this is climate change, I would definitely argue, not just in the far future, but in the near future, its effect on people's existence, and whether or not it affects us directly here in Derbyshire, it affects people all around the world, and I think it's quite self-centered of us to deci decide that it is not an existential threat purely because it won't affect us directly within the next 11 years. It will affect so many people around the globe. And I believe as a first world country, we should be setting a clear precedent that this will not slide, that by declaring this is a threat, that we are showing that we will take action on it and that we will do something about it. Because 97% of scientists agree, I feel like this has been quoted quite a lot, uh, that this is our fault and we have to do something about it to solve it. And I'm going to just leave you with the fact that no crisis, no significant event in British or even world history has been solved by sitting idly by and just pretending it won't happen, just letting it pass you by and ignoring it. We've got to do something. And the start of that movement of doing something is declaring this as a problem by declaring that climate change is an existential threat and that we should be doing something about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you very much, and, and my commendations from all of us for, for braving here with us tonight. I hope you have many more um, further political and climate change interactions. Thank you. Thank you for your patience at the back. This is now your motion. I'm going to ask Councillor Ratcliffe to introduce his motion. Councillor Ratcliffe.
Thank you, Chair. Uh, it may be motion B, but it's number one on my agenda, and I hope on yours too. Uh, this address now is really to uh, my fellow councillors, but it's also for uh, you, uh, the public uh, who have come along this evening, and, and anyone else who's listening uh, this evening too. Can I ask, first of all, that you put aside just for once in this chamber, your political allegiances and think of yourselves as a resident of Derbyshire Dales, perhaps as a parent or indeed as a grandparent, and think about the decision that you're now about to make, which may be, and I'm not being dramatic, it may be the most significant that you've ever undertaken in this council. When your house is on fire, you do everything you can to put out the fire. It's taken a 16-year-old Swedish girl to give us this simple but dramatic analogy and wake us up to the scientific fact that this planet is warming up at a dramatic rate. The Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change Special Report on Global Warming states that if we continue to produce greenhouse gas emissions at the current rate, we are highly likely to produce greenhouse gas emissions that will push us to an average global temperature 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels as early as the year 2030. This global temperature will mean our house is literally on fire. The effects of this will be catastrophic for millions. Global food shortages, rising sea levels, species extinction and geopolitical breakdown. As councillors, we have not only to take leadership in local government matters, but also to be prepared to lobby our national representatives <coughs> over issues that affect us globally and as a country. Nearly 400 years ago, one of this country's most famous poets wrote, No man is an island entire of itself, Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. We all have a role to play, for good or ill, in the future of our species. More than 70 UK councils have already committed to making their councils net zero carbon and have begun to develop action plans to achieve that. Both Scarborough <coughs> and Oxfordshire have agreed to be carbon neutral by 2030. Now we all know that our district council is desperately resource poor. Austerity cuts have reduced the amounts of monies available for revenue spend, which is why the motion is calling on national government to provide the appropriate levels of support and funding. However, we still need to set ambitious goals and work out what we need to achieve those goals. But the first thing we can do this evening is to agree this motion as a symbol of political commitment to do what is right and what is necessary. We need to be honest with our residents and general public and no doubt some of them, like you, will be thinking, what can a small authority like Derbyshire Dale do that will make the slightest difference? Yet any analysis shows that the influence that local government has over sectors that affect climate change, which includes waste, energy, transport, <coughs> housing, planning, the list is endless. There are practical actions that can be taken to reduce 
carbon emissions, promotions on walking, cycling, the use of public transport, LED lighting, the use of higher energy efficiency technology, lowering the heat settings in offices and the, and the home, using peat-free comp compost, avoiding built-in obsolescence, using longer lasting products, more recycling, checking pension funds and investment sources to promote low carbon <coughs> industries and clean energy production. And we don't have to do it alone. Other councils in Derbyshire either have or are preparing to join us. And there are numerous partnership uh, organisations and free tools out there for us to use. Where there is the will, there invariably is a way to be found. And the benefits of investment outweigh any concerns. Think about cleaner air and water as spin-offs. Derbyshire Dale's backing of this motion will give impetus to Parliament and others to follow. Climate change is the major and pressing th threats to peace, stability and security. It's a daunting foe, but it should ignore, ignite the best in us, uniting us as a human family in defence of our planet. Divisions should not be relevant. Cooperation and commitment is everything. Let's vote this evening <coughs> and make Derbyshire Dales the leader, not the follower. Thank you very much. Councillor Radcliffe, does that find a seconder? Councillor Pawley, thank you very much. Okay. Uh, moving into debate. Councillor Chapman. Thank you, Chair. Um, I commend Councillor Ratcliffe for bringing this motion forward and I support it with every fibre of my being. Um, I, I would like, with your approval, Mike, to make a couple of amendments to your, um, to your motion and I think you'll find they are positive amendments. Um, I think we need to be more robust um, I think we need to be, at the moment, the approach to climate change is rearranging the deck chairs on the deck of the Titanic. Uh, and we need to make <coughs> actions rather than words. And I, I, I commend particularly the, 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 the timeline of 2030, because if we stick to the 2050, in 2045, the council will be sitting here saying, God, it's time we did something about this. So the urgency is imperative. And I'll give you, I'm going to give you some statistics to, to back up that urgency. I'm sorry this will turn into a little bit of a, a lecture on climate change and causes, but it's what I'm involved with in my everyday life and pretty everything else I'm, 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 I'm concerned with. Um, the first amendment might would be to change CO2 to GHG because I think we need to look at all greenhouse gases uh, because there is a tendency to, to be driven in the direction of CO2 carbon dioxide alone. And the reason is um, measurement of carbon footprint is, is a combination of all the greenhouse gases put together. It is not specific to carbon dioxide. It is the total of them. The main ones are methane, nitrous oxide, and um, CFCs, as well as CO2. Now, global warming is measured by what's known as a, a yardstick of GWP, which is global warming potential. That's based on um, carbon dioxide being the baseline and CO2 has a, a GW, sorry, I'm talking in that but it's a, it's a global warming potential of one. Methane has a global warming potential of 30, mm -hmm. which means that one, kilo, one ton of methane is equivalent to 30 tons yeah. of carbon dioxide. So, and methane arises from agriculture, it arises from, from landfill, both of which we have influence on. Nitrous oxide, this is no laughing matter, 
the old rather chemical joke there. Um, which is laughing gas in normal circumstances, but is obviously in too low a concentration to make us giggle all the time. Um, nitrous oxide has a global warming <coughs> potential of 300. So one ton of nitrous oxide will give a global warming will be equivalent to 300 tons of carbon dioxide. They have to be taken into account on their own um, on their own instance. Chlorofluorocarbons, which are making a comeback, mainly thanks to the Chinese, uh, have got probably a GWP in the tens of thousands. So we've got to be aware of those. We've got to bring that to the um, to the attention of the world, basically, starting with the Darcher Dales. These are st statistics that are frightening. They're scary, and I make no apologies. And I, in fact, I hope they are scaring people to death. Because in my experience, fear is a very good antidote for complacency. <coughs> and um, that, that is the first point, Mike, with the GHG. Um, just one scary statistic on carbon dioxide alone, we are currently running of atmospheric levels of 405 parts per million, which is estimated to be the highest level for the last five million years, right? And the even scarier statistic is that 20% of that carbon dioxide increase has happened within the lifetime of this people in this council. Not you, Colin, because you're just a human state. <laughs> so, right. The, the good news part is that carbon dioxide emissions within the United Kingdom are actually static or, or dropping. Um, and we have to make a distinction between carbon emissions and carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. And the atmospheric levels, as I've just stated, are rising considerably. And however much you hypothesize this, this is where the biodiversity, where the biomass comes in, because the difference between emission and concentration is that part of those emissions are, are absorbed through photosynthesis, by, by plant life, by, by algae, by seawater, uh, and, and the balance is what we, what we arrive at. And it's obvious that the emissions are probably being more outstripped by the lack of biomass, which we are responsible for as, as human beings. And that's the second part that I'd like to amend um, in, your, um, in your motion, Mike, where it says natural habitats, wildlife and biodiversity are in peril both from human intervention and climate change, because I think we need to make make sure that, that people are aware that it's not a one-way street, it's not a, a one-way system. We are responsible for the for the deforestation, for for for, for desertification, for, for destruction of our peatlands. Um, we, we're, we're chopping down temporal forests and rainforests uh, to, to plant palm oil so that there won't be a, short, a, a world shortage of Terry's chocolate oranges. Um, so we, we, we need to look at that as part of this whole. On the, on the carrying on with the biodiversity point, <coughs> a question to this council. Did anybody read about Harry and Meghan having a baby? Yeah, everybody nodded. Every level of media, social, television, radio, every newspaper headline gave the, gave the news. Woman gives birth to a baby. Great. At the same day and on the same newspapers, it was also released, released a media release by the IPBES. The IPBS is the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform for Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services. Just to show you, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> they stated that within the next three decades, due to human intervention, the number of species, different species, on this planet will decline by one million. Yeah. Okay? Uh, just as the same thing which when, when Michael Gove released the Clean Air Strategy in January, um, it probably wasn't noted because I think Prince Philip rammed somebody with his Land Rover. So again, there's a, there's a serious point from the, from the frivolity is that people don't 
don't look at, don't, don't take note of what's serious in the world and what's happening to climate change. So, again, if you're happy with those amendments, Mike, I, I'm very strongly in support. I think what I'd like to see with this council is that we form a working group quick, quicker rather than, than sooner rather than later. I would like to think we could involve uh, organisations like the Derbyshire Climate Coalition, who, who, who I admire, who I've received emails from, and I haven't replied to them. I apologise because I was waiting for tonight t before I made any any reply. Um, and we 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 need, as a council, our, our responsibilities are. are it's pretty similar to everything else, but they're, they're more urgent. We need the leadership and, leadership and vision. We need, we need to establish partnerships. Um, we, need to, we need to educate and change at national and local and district levels and provide support and information. And we can influence emissions uh, within residential buildings, within, within surface transport, within waste. So we have got the means to, to influence this. Yep. And, and I strongly support you. I, 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 I ask that everybody on this council supports this motion. It's of the utmost importance, it, and, it, it, and it has to be, it has to be taken. Thank you. Just going to ask Sandra to read the amendment out as such as she's collated it. Uh, thank you, Chair. What Councillor Chapman is suggesting uh, happens on the third line of the the motion as published. And we have natural habitats, wildlife and biodiversity are delete in peril and add not only in peril from climate change, they are being adversely affected by human intervention, which in turn is enhancing the effects of climate change. And secondly, um, is to delete <coughs> CO2 emissions on the final uh, point of that paragraph and replace it with greenhouse emissions. Greenhouse gas. Greenhouse gas emissions, okay. sorry. Does that find a uh, second uh, uh, Councillor Robson? Chair, um, Councillor Chapman has spoken eloquently and passionately and obviously has a great deal of knowledge and expertise in this subject and I fully support and second his amendment. Um, or we could do it another way. Alternatively, Chair, uh, Councillor Ratcliffe might consider that there was amendments I, I, I and enhances proposition. I very quickly respond. My great anxiety this evening was to come to the Council and find either that we had climate change sceptics lurking among us or that amendments would be put forward that so watered down the original objective that actually it lost value. Or, and dare I say this, that amendments might be put forward for political use. That was never my intention when I raised this. I did it purely on a time scale, as Sandra Lang will know. I think it was five minutes to midnight or something when I got, managed to get this uh, through. Otherwise, there would have been a considerable uh, wait before another opportunity. I accept what uh, uh, Councillor Chapman has said, and, and I thank him for su his support. He might be interested to know, incidentally, and I'm sure he probably does know, uh, that um, the national park authorities themselves are looking at this and looking at ways that they can intervene and, and manage their own um, greenhouse gas emissions and indeed implement measures that actually assist in reducing uh, those <laughs> levels. I'm on the so, steering group, Mike. I'm on the, I'm on the park. Oh, you're on the steering group. group. Excellent. Oh, well, you'll be a, a very useful member of our. A working group when it gets going and I again I accept uh, there we had a, a discussion with your uh, leader uh, uh, earlier about the constituency of that uh, and uh, I, I think this has all been taken on on board but I accept your amendment about uh, 
the wording of greenhouse gas emissions. Clearly it is a framework of, of gases other than CO2, though, though they remain extremely important. And, and I think your point about uh, deforestation, etc., uh, is valid too. And, and I have to say, uh, my analysis of what you've suggested doesn't uh, uh, involve any undermining or watering down of the original motion. Okay, thank you very much. So, Councillor um, Ratcliffe is, is happy for all those things <coughs> to be incorporated into your original motion. Yeah. So, if, if we sort of clump it together, that's yeah, okay. That's okay, you're happy with that, so it's a seconder. Okay, I'm now moving into debate on this. I've got lots of people who want to talk. I've got Councillor Slack first. Uh, thank you, Chair. First, uh, I'd like to thank Councillor Chapman for bringing that very good information and uh, making the amendments, which I agree with. Uh, there's great danger in this in climate change, the world, the worldwide. We may think in this country that we are immune from it, but we are. We are totally not immune from it. The world will, all the world will be affected. So may I say that a large developing countries, uh, developing countries will take part, I'm sure, when they see this country and Europe going towards a, a carbon-free and uh, society in the next few years. There's overwhelming evidence that climate change is affecting everything. From the polar regions, we see icebergs breaking away, uh, uh, the polar caps. In Greenland, we see uh, glaciers disappearing and running into the sea, and sea levels <coughs> rising, which will cause devastation to many, many, many countries. We see many ver varieties of extreme weather. Last summer, fire up the west coast of the United States, massive fires. Large fires in Australia, uh, many more than fires in this country, in Lancashire, Yorkshire, North Derbyshire, many more, more uh, hurricanes in the Caribbean and USA, and recently great loss of life on the east coast of Africa in uh, Mozambique and Malawi, with uh, a cyclone at that point, with a large tidal wave, which loss of life was enormous and the flooding area it was said to be the most severe weather event to it the southern hemisphere in, in, in any history or living memory of anyone yes it's only the start of climate change but we will get far worse if we do not go go and destroy the world we must we must now take control of this with burning fossil fuels such as coal diesel petrol aviation fuel destroys them and destroying the rainforests of South America and Asia. We must stop this immediately. It is, an, it is an emergency, there's no doubt about it, it's an emergency and we must act now with a program of renewable energy and saving energy and use the natural elements that the world has given us, which are wind, water and sun. There, there, there'll be great change in permitting more wind turbines, we've got to do this, and it's got to be changed on this foot. Um, uh, recently, last year, we had a planning application uh, for wind turbines, uh, um, which uh, unfortunately, uh, Peak Park, in their comments, one of the Peak Park members, referred to seeing the wind, wind turbines from Winston Moor. Well, if we're going down that attitude, we're not going to get anywhere. We've got to be realistic, and which is most important, seeing wind turbines or having wind turbines. We've got to get to grips with this, and we've got to be realistic. And, and I'm afraid uh, the planning has got to be a little bit more relaxed than what it has been. Uh, all areas will be affected by the Peak Park and, and all areas. So we will see, we'll have to see change in wind turbines to be built. Also, new houses should have solar panels as a part of the planning applications. Uh, this, is, this will have to come in to, save, to generate electricity. Uh, also, um, the, cost, the cost will be high. I'm not admitting it won't be high, but the, if we don't do it, the cost will be severe. Okay. It will be very severe. I would like to see the District Council setting up a joint committee, as uh, Mr. Chapman, David Chapman has just suggested, a joint committee for climate change emergency action of officers, 
councillors and, and the public taking part in this and uh, I mean uh, everyone inputting into this. Okay, councillor Sainz, have you how much have, more have you got? Because about three minutes. Oh, well, I think I think you've had. Well, I've got lots of people. If you do, right. if you don't mind. So uh, coming back to that, can I just finish? Uh, well, if it's three minutes, I think you've yeah. had about seven. If that's all right, hey, we've got lots of lots of people to talk. I'd just like to comment on myself and my ward, but I yeah, remember yeah. joining you for that Griff yeah. Grange one, uh, along with a yeah, liberal Democrat yeah, column, yeah, didn't yeah, you? And yeah. we were very much in the uh, in, in, in the. We were very much we outvoted. Right. It was very good. Can okay. I can I can I just get on to the others, please? I, can you know. just finish, please? Uh, no. Um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm going to be honest. I think you've had your fair time, I'm afraid. Uh, Councillor Gamble, please. <laughs> That's right. Sorry. Councillor Gamble, I think. Uh, that is your turn now. Um, again, all I can say is, is reiterate my absolute support for this. I'm so, so pleased that this is being brought forward. And again, it's nice to see contributions from Councillor Chapman. They were very positive, thank you. And his, ex and his um, ex um, thing about the um, committee, <coughs> like a very eminently sensible one. I, I'm not going to repeat all the things that everybody else has said, which, which know far more things than I do about the world that's ever do green activities. But what all I'd like to say really is when we do this and we get this and I'm assuming we're going to pass this, that we all commit to the idea that this is going to have a very practical reality in what this council does in its decision making, in, in all the aspects that, and that, that it, it commits to do this in a coordinated way, not ad hoc departments doing this, something like that. We actually look at the overarching actually <coughs> overall impact of what the council does on a climate change level and I, and I also would really hopefully hope that we were going to commit to actually starting this action quickly. I don't want this to be another talking shop. I've experienced this 25 years ago I was on the green tank, the tank sorry, in a council and we don't seem to have achieved a lot in 25 years. <laughs> I have to say I hope this is not going to be one of those again. I hope this is going to really, people are going to really take this by the horns, that we're going to really have, that everybody's going to be absolutely committed to, to what this council does for its local residents of climate change. Thank you. Councillor Purdy. Thank you, Chair. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the students and thank you for your patience, but I commend you for bringing this to us. I remind you that I did make it as my leader's announcement that this council should deal with climate change. So I thank Councillor Ratcliffe for bringing the motion and as you can see Mike we've got a secret weapon in Councillor Chapman. Yes. <laughs> so I promise that and I've had already immediately after the count in fact on the night of the count I uh, talks with Mr Wilson uh, about my uh, wishes for this new term uh, one of which as I say is the climate change and Mr Wilson is on board with it. So the practicalities yes we will move on it it won't be a talking shop uh, I'm going on holiday next Tuesday for two weeks. Mr. Wilson is going on holiday after that, but we faithfully promise that we'll get things moving and work out the practicalities, the best way of setting up a working group, who should be on it, and what <coughs> benchmarks we need to set, and what measures we can achieve. So you have our promise on that. Thank you all for the contribution. Councillor Mac Mac McDonough. Thanks, Ted. Whilst I'd urge you all to support this motion and amendment on declaring a <coughs> climate emergency, I'd also urge us all to think about our own lives and what positive actions we could take to reduce our own carbon footprints. As an elected representative in my local community, I very much see myself as a role model and feel I should lead by example, helping to inspire others. I'm probably an extreme case, as 11 years ago I sold my car in favour of cycling everywhere and I easily clock up over 100 miles a week, quite something with the hills around here. Scientists estimate going car free saves 2.4 tonnes of carbon a year. Whilst I'm not advocating you all go car free, although it would be great if you did, I'm all in favour of more bums on bikes, it'd make the road safer for a start. You can make small changes hold meetings via Skype, consider buying an electric bike, walk, car share, especially when coming to meetings like this. I'm sure with a bit of forward planning, this could be arranged. 
Although I'm not necessarily advocating the two Masson councillors' car share, as our Joyce sharing with your Gary would probably be a bit awkward, but you get the picture. It would be fantastic. It's a TV show. <laughs> we work very closely together, thank you. Yes, I've heard you do. <laughs> Just in case you aren't already impressed enough by my green credentials, having been vegetarian for yonks, last year I moved to a plant-based diet. As well as improving my health, I'm saving an estimated 0.8 tonnes of carbon a year. Again, it isn't difficult to make changes. How about a dairy-free day a week and a meat-free day at the weekend? If me, the self-declared cheese addict and chocoholic, can cut it out altogether, the rest of you have no excuse. Apart from uh, all-out war with modern mass weapons of destruction, climate change is the greatest threat to our planet and everyone on it. It's critical that we all take ownership of this. Think globally, act locally, support this amendment and motion. Act now, tomorrow's too late. Councillor Cruz. Thank you, Chair. So I think firstly, I just wanted to say uh, feedback in terms of Councillor Radcliffe. A great speech you gave, very sincere, very eloquent. So... From an intent point of view, we fully support overall the motion. Also, I just wanted to say thanks to Ella, to George, and to Laura for coming along and, uh, and sharing their input. And I think it should shape the way that we approach this problem, being really inclusive. So I think that's really important too. One of the other things I wanted to uh, just highlight was that uh, given the, the house is on fire, are we acting quickly enough? Is my reflection. And I think it's really good to hear Councillor Purdy say that we're going to meet soon. I would like us to be able to get a date on that. So is it going to be in the next month would be my suggestion. So I will be looking for an amendment so that we can be really specific and time bound. Good people here who've come along to listen to us and say, we're going to get this working group together. I think we should think about the, the language that we're using. Things like committees, working groups, could it be an action group? So it's really focused on action rather than maybe it's some local government language that doesn't actually land with the people who, who we're working with on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'd also like us to consider that. And uh, one of the other things I think would be good to get some clarity on is the need to have a clear link between the Climate Emergency Action Plan and the holistic impact of the Council. So it should cover all policy decision-making and service delivery, minimising the impact on climate and biodiversity. So I would also like that to be put forward as an amendment and additionally, as a final uh, point, it comes back to the house being on fire and the showing and leading by example the input that we had from George and Ella in terms of making sure that we create a movement today and it's not something that we kick into the long grass. I just I would like us to, to consider that we have an interim report within three months and not wait six months for the report to come back. So I'd like an update so that we really understand what's going on and it can be shared with our stakeholders. So they're, they're the things I'd like to... <coughs> can I just ask Sandra for, to comment? Just on your amendment, Councillor Cruz, have you got any specific wording there that I could use and see if I can weave it in for you? I've got... <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. So I have actually built in a lot of the feedback that I've picked up as we've gone through, so some of it is now not needed, because so many good points have been made, particularly by Councillor Chapman, but uh, the points I raised, I think I'd like them to be followed up on, please. Okay, I'm going to continue with the debate, well, uh, well, um, because as I said, we've got lots of people to talk. <coughs> Councillor Bright, next. I was going to say uh, a lot of stuff about personal responsibility, but uh, I was beaten to it by uh, the uh, councillor over there. I also tried uh, for a little while to cycle to the uh, the chamber, but uh, Cromford Hill beat me, so I have a lot more respect. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for you to get up and down that, that beast of a hill, uh, but I will try and do it in the future. Um, we do have a lot of responsibility personally and as a council to, to make as big an impact as we can and to mitigate the uh, issues with uh, global warming. Um, what I have noticed is that we have a lot of professional experts in this room by the sounds of it, David being a great example. I would like to put on record now that I volunteer to uh, be in the working group uh, to give my expertise in the field of high energy efficient lighting systems which could have a bigger impact on a reduction in carbon emissions. So uh, that's just my, my little bit I can put forward today. Okay, thank you. We're still computing um, the potential amendment. Um, Councillor Flitter. Chair, 
could you just tell new members that they should be turning their mics off when yeah. they're finished? I beg your pardon. Yeah, once you've spoken, just turn off the, the, the button, please. So I've got Councillor Flitter next, please. Thank you, Chair. Well, I think, it, I, I think we have to pay tribute to Mike to bringing this forward at uh, such a late stage. Um, and the eloquence of uh, people that have already spoken. Um, but, I mean, somebody, I think it was Claire mentioned earlier on, 25 years ago she was uh, with a green credentials. I was planting trees over 40 years ago and trying to get something done. And you know, throughout the last 20, 30 years, government has just not recognised the need for climate change. They've ignored it. For one reason or another, they've totally <coughs> ignored it. And now the youngsters, of which I pay great tribute to for coming tonight, yeah. and for the work they've done over the whole of the country, yeah. is making people <coughs> sit up, wake up, and actually, hopefully, put this at the front of their minds and get something done. I think it was said earlier on as well, I'm passionate about uh, global warming. As a grandparent, I want to see my grandchildren grow up <coughs> in a world without pollution. Um, and to be quite honest, from what I heard from the County Council meeting, my main worry tonight was the dilution of any put forward and I hope that my colleagues have put something forward as well that strengthens Mike's uh, motion because we want to support that but again we want action and not words because I don't want this to be put uh, a motion put and approved tonight and then put on the back shelf now it was also and I think it was George that said tonight that attitudes have got to change. And I link that with political will. And there has not been political will to deal with this problem. And we only have to look at the coastal issue where governments have sat back and are prepared to see a vast amount of Lincolnshire go underwater in the next 50 years and lose that when we should be getting sea defences and nobody is really tackling inland flooding uh, and pollution. You know, we, we're getting lots of city centres now trying to cut down, but it's not enough that you just cut the traffic down. And there are issues, as rightly been said again, about transport, housing. Well, I've been in a meeting this afternoon with Councillor Purdy, and one of my questions was, how strong is the plan is? Uh, system to deal with <coughs> new build and how do we check that that has been built to our specifications and the planning system just does not allow us to make sure that everything is done over and above board it's very difficult so when you talk about environmental issues then we haven't got the support from those behind us and again as right have been said Derbyshire Derbyshire Dales in particular have got an abundance of uh, natural uh, wind power, solar power, the possibility for hydroelectrics. Uh, the water is there it's flowing through our, our nation and our, our Derbyshire Dales and we're not tapping that. And why? It's all down to finance. <coughs> At the end of the day the political will isn't there because it affects jobs somewhere, it affects profits on big business somewhere and people aren't willing to make those sacrifices to put our environment right. It's so important and, and fundamental to the health of everybody in this country, it's also very fundamental to making sure that our environmental credentials are adhered to uh, in, in force. So I support any motion that is going to start the ball rolling. But let me just tell you, 
items one and two where the council pledges declare a, a climate emergency yes 2030 yes call on government as i've said they've never listened to a lot that we've put forward in the past because of the financial because of other reasons but we've got to demand that they listen we've not got to call and ask working cross partnerships well quite frankly it appalls me to note some of the comments made at the county council meeting and I, I've got the copy of the Matlock Mercury where the climate change organization are absolutely appalled at what they did to that motion it is not what they wanted I didn't want this to be watered down in any way shape or form and to make comments about a local binary by, by the leader I think was absolutely appalling it's not taking seriously the issue of climate change I do agree on the six months but I also think that we need an interim report to see where we're going because we need to do a lot of work but we do not want this to be shelved after this meeting tonight these people at the back deserve better our grandchildren deserve better let's give them that opportunity <coughs> and so we, Sandra and I have had a bit of a conflict while everybody's been teaching about this because um, sorry face of that it, it's, it's not complicated it's very complicated and we may have come up with a solution to Councillor Cruz okay and Sandra's going to ask our leader Yes, Chair. Uh, Councillor Cruz has proposed quite a complicated amendment which seeks a commitment to setting up a task force within particular time scales. And one suggestion is to set up a task force across the council chamber. I certainly think that's been implied in the debate tonight. So uh, to avoid an amendment if members were prepared to accept the leader's commitment to set up that task force, that might be a more efficient way of dealing with it. The other issue is to report back to the council within three months with an interim report on progress and in six months with a final report. Whilst that might be admirable, I think in setting up a new task force we might need to be reasonable in how we can do that and again the leader may wish to give a commitment to do that as soon as practicable but I think coming straight from the floor that might be something he can't particularly commit to or the council to vote on. So I'm looking for some assistance from the leader to give his approval and sanction that he will set up a task force and to give his assurance that he will do that as soon as practicable. And if that's suitable for Councillor Cruz, um, that would replace an amendment. Councillor Purdy. Which American president said, watch my list? <laughs> I have already said that we will set up a working group and I promise faithfully to do that. I do think that three months is too soon because of our holiday commitments between Mr. Wilson and myself. Unfortunately, we go away, I go away next week, two weeks, Mr. Wilson then catches on to the end of my holiday and then he goes away. And then we're at the LGA conference in Bournemouth where we can discuss this. But I am already proposing to Mr. Wilson that we have a discussion at the end of this meeting tonight with our group, and particularly with Councillor Chapman, to set the ball rolling. What I do promise is that we will set up a working group but we need to work closely with Mr. Wilson and Sandra as to the makeup of that group, who should sit on it. So I think I'd like to report back to you by the middle of July. That gives time for our auditors to get out of the way, for the LGA Bournemouth Conference to get out of the way. I have commitments with Sheffield and <coughs> need to enter. So if you give me that freedom, please, I do promise to come back by that date. So we need to work together with the officers to discuss the makeup of that group. I've also instructed Mr. Wilson that I will write as leader uh, to the minister responsible uh, to echo the motion and the decision of this council tonight and its aspirations to deal with climate issues. So, uh, we'll put some wording together and I'll let you all have sight of the copy of that letter. Okay. Uh, members, I'd like to get on with the debate. We've got another nine members to debate and you know we've got another four or five items, please. Uh, so you, you Just on the to... issue, does Councillor Cruz accept exactly. the leader's commitment, which we will um, minute that he will report by the mid of July? 
on these issues. Just for clarity, Councillor Bailey, I do appreciate in the interest of time, the, the update in July, middle of July, is that basically going to be the task force is launched or, or what, what, is, what, is it, what is it what is it include? By then we will have uh, de decided upon the makeup of the group, so that's that's the most important step. We, we then need to set benchmarks, uh, we then need to decide who else we should draw into this. It's already been mentioned tonight about the Peak Park Board. Uh, there's already collaboration between the Dobbs County Council and the Peak Park Board. Now I've heard on the Leaders Advisory Group this afternoon and from tonight that you want, we want to lead this initiative. No problem with that, but I don't think it's wise for us to not work collaboratively with other authorities. We would be a stronger force, if you see what I mean. So, to set up a task force, certainly by mid of July, and set out. There's some policies that need to be set. We can't just set a group up and just start the ball rolling. You have to look at the government's framework surrounding that, and therefore I need to take advice from Sandra as to how that working group could be set up and run. Okay, thank you. I, I think that's as, as clear as we can get. I'd like to get everybody to talk on this, and I'm going to limit everyone to no more than three minutes now. And I've got lots of, I'm taking them everyone in order. Okay, uh, and that's right, that's great. So, Councillor Swindle. Uh, I'll, I'll be very brief, Chair, because um, I totally support the motion. Um, congratulate Councillor Ackley for bringing it to the Council. Um, but a lot's been said that I was going to say in some of it, which is. <laughs> far better than what I was going to say, so I won't embarrass myself, but I'd also like to congratulate all the young people here tonight, because when I was younger, I was minded, and I had single issue interests, and so on, and I was bonkers. So it's really good to see you lot actually going out there and taking the fight to, to the councils uh, in Derbyshire Dales, and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Councillor Frogger. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd just like to thank uh, Councillor Ratcliffe for tabling the motion. <coughs> As an authority, we are extremely lucky to have somebody like Councillor Chapman with his wealth of knowledge on this issue. And as such, we have to move forward very, very quickly. Um, and I'm sure I won't offend anybody if I, say, if I say that the majority of people in this room over the last 30 to 40 years have in some way contributed to global warming. So as such, we have a responsibility to alter things to make this world a better place for future generations and I fully support this motion. <laughs> Councillor O'Brien. Uh, thank you Chair. Um, the, the mention of uh, wind tar turbines at Winster, Winster Moor, um, did make me think of a, uh, a, a little local difficulty we, we may uh, face in uh, achieving this very ambitious target. And I think other members have referred to that, so the, the Peak Park. But we've only got 11 years to achieve this target. It, it could well take half of that period to persuade the Peak Park to actually take this issue seriously. Well, I'm wondering, um, Chair and members, if, if our position will be strength. And I don't want our efforts to be undermined by uh, a, a lack of commitment by the Peak Park, whether explicit or implicit. So I'm wondering whether it would be helpful um, to us all if uh, we added a further amendment to this motion, which, by which we formally approach the Peak Park Authority uh, with a formal request by this council to uh, adopt the motion, and that uh, a meeting of the Peak Park Authority is addressed by the uh, leaders of the three political groups and the independents if they wish to, uh, to show the commitment that this authority has. I'll just get David Chapman, as, as you know, sits on the National Park. I think he can answer that one briefly if you could, because I think, I think that would assuage the fears. First of all, let me assure you Peak Park are fully committed to addressing climate change, fully committed. We've had a climate change steering group going for a while now, uh, which we will be holding a, a conference in the autumn to invite stakeholders, partners to, 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 to push the way forward. With regard to wind turbines, 
it needs to be appreciated that the national park, all national parks, have the highest protection, highest designation protection in the entire country. And the, the, the rules that they adhere to are statutory. They are not they are not a bunch of planning officers saying, no, we don't want wind turbines. And, and by the way, there are two large wind turbines in the, um, in the National Park near Parwich. So the hands are tied on that score. It's not, it's not a case of commitment. It's not a case of reticence. It's a case of guidelines put out by this government. The, there is an overriding principle. There are, there are two core purposes of the National Park. One is protection and enhancement of the landscape. Two is to promote the understanding and enjoyment of the general public within those national parks. Both of those core purposes are overruled by one particular condition, and it's called the Sanford Principle. And that states that in cases of dispute, landscape always takes precedent. And okay. that is insurmountable as far as the National Park is concerned. Thank you very much. Well, now, as I think that's answered that question. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hughes, you've been waiting patiently. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, I have two points, really. Uh, first of all, um, the first one is that LL11 said that there was a need for immediate action. And uh, the second point is that uh, the second bullet, uh, the third bullet, um, sorry, the second bullet, make Derbyshire Dales District Council carbon neutral by 2030 is ambiguous. I don't know whether that means the body, this organisation, or whether it means Derbyshire Dales as a district. And as a consequence of that, I think the, 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 we, in, in our amendment, we added another, another bullet, and the other bullet read, act to minimize the impact on the climate and on biodiversity arising from council policies and decisions. So that means that we were looking at immediate action, immediate uh, response to climate change uh, in the decision-making process of the council. And to do that, uh, we don't really need uh, a task force, although we also welcome the idea of a task force and having a task force, but we mean, what it means is that from tomorrow, Every decision, every reasonable, reasonably large decision that the council makes, either here or, or officers make themselves, should consider the impact on climate change. Now, for example, there are 2,485 houses, at least 2,485 houses going to be built in Derbyshire Dales between now and 2033, in, 13, in, in just over 13 years' time. Uh, some of those houses, about a thousand of those houses, uh, may come to some sort of planning um, detail, uh, some, some sort of planning uh, decision this year or early next year. In order to make sure that those, those, the plans for those houses take into account uh, the, the needs for uh, to accommodate climate change uh, requirements and standards. We need to act now, not in three months' time or six months' time. We have to take a decision now that all future decisions of this council will uh, will respond to, uh, will, will take into account climate change. For example, if you build a housing estate uh, at the top of, uh, on Asker Lane, for example, the, the, the carbon, the uh, amount of energy needs, needed to move a car with passengers, with their load of shopping from Sainsbury's, from the bottom of the hill to the top of the hill, if it was 100% efficient, would be about one and a half kilowatt hours. They're uh, burning an electric, one bar electric fire for about two hours. Cars are only 25% efficient, so it would require about six kilowatt hours of input energy to, to uh, raise that car up to that housing estate. So a decision to put a housing estate at the top of a hill has one consequence, and it is that it will, uh, it will require, it will encourage uh, the use of a carbon-based fuel. Uh, there are other examples. People who are moving into the new houses that are built, um, if they're built to the present standard, will have very good, very good insulation, but not the best insulation. They will have gas boilers, not, uh, not heat exchange, not uh, <coughs> heat pumps. And the consequence of that is that as, government, as regulations 
uh, get stiffer as the requirement to cut carbon emissions from gas grow, uh, they will have to replace their gas boilers, they will have to increase the, the, their, their uh, insulation. Now the cost of putting that insulation and a uh, suitable heat source into a house now is about 4% of the capital cost of the house according to the British the building research establishment. To do it later is going to be more expensive and will, and will incur a huge amount of inconvenience for the people who live in that house. So therefore, the decisions that are made now, which will have to be, uh, will, will affect those people who are moving into those houses within the next 10 years. And, that, and again, the, the, there is a requirement to act now and there is a requirement to take into account climate change in all the decisions that are made by the council. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Hughes. As I said, I've got three, four more speakers. That's all tonight because we've got lots of other things to, to address. And I think we'd like to get. I think we're getting to a very similar conclusion uh, here tonight. Uh, Councillor um, uh, Michelle Morley. Thank you, Chair. Um, a little bit of positive um, moving forward immediately. Um, has come to mind. Um, as councillors, we are encouraged um, to keep in touch with our, our constituents by going to parish council meetings or taking part in various events in their towns and villages. And very recently, in my area of Brailsford, I was asked to attend um, a site meeting with the one of the parish councillors, and it was to visit a, a building site. Um, I perhaps wasn't quite ready to walk on a building site, however, I went. I had a, a, a chat with the site manager as well, because we were concerned uh, not only about wildlife, we were concerned about some shrubs, etc. But I was heartened, actually, that each of those houses were being built um, to a very high standard of efficiency, and also as, um, not as an extra, but included in the garages were the uh, facilities for electric cars, which I thought was very good. And that was hard, and I wasn't really looking for that, but it was nice to see on a very local, small level that that's happening. Um, I referred earlier to parish council meetings. It might be useful if we, either by email or going to these meetings, if we stress to the council meeting there how important it is to us and perhaps to transfer some of this message to the residents straight away. Rather than waiting for task forces, waiting for information, we can do that more or less straight away. And I wholeheartedly support um, the, the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Raw. Right, um, sorry. New to this, I'm just checking I've got a mic on. Yeah, you've got a right, mic on. Okay. Um, we can't have heard, because of all the governance issues, do anything formally in terms of task force brief, you know, quickly to respond to this emergency. But we do have committees set up, and I do think it would be really useful for each of those committees to think about a commitment going forward that they can take and publicly declare in terms of the environment so we can get that agendered and sorted out very, very quickly. I do agree with Councillor Hughes and feel that we need to look at environmental impact assessments across all our work. The key thing for me is about <coughs> behaviours, personal behaviours, behaviours as a council and behaviours as a community and a large community of Derbyshire, but you know, individual villages, towns. I know in my village in Eam, we're really um, trying to push forward on the green issue. Somebody the other day in church said, um, this is, you know, we saved the plague, we've got to, we've, we've saved, saved uh, the country from the plague, we've got to save the planet from, uh, from climate distinction, and, you know, they picked up the mantle. I'm rabbiting on here. But um, for me, one of the things that is key is that we slow life down, we bring things back more locally, we stop doing things personally that will impact upon the environment. Now I can't profess to be as wonderful as Elsa, Elisa here. She does a marvellous job being a vegan. My son thanks me every time I see him about veganism. But we can, when we're eating meat, think about buying from our local butchers the wonderful lamb that's reared healthily on the hills of the Peak District. We can think about buying eggs from our local farmers. 
we can think about shopping locally and I would ask and urge every one of you in this building and beyond to commit to driving your car at least one day a week less. So if you drive it seven days a week, drive it six. If you drive it four, drive it three. You know, we really should be thinking before we get behind that wheel. First step for me tonight, can we get rid of that coffee machine and those cups that are not usable again? Thank you. Councillor Pauly. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's just a, a question of perception. We, we, we've got um, young people here who've come in and said this is an emergency and they want something done immediately. And then we hear the leader saying that he's having to go away for a fortnight and the chief exec going away for a fortnight. I would urge that uh, we use our perfectly capable deputy leader and somebody else uh, in officer capacity to take these things forward during that month. <coughs> Uh, Councillor Rose. Uh, well, um, Chairman, I think it's been a very interesting debate and uh, I certainly supported uh, the original aims of uh, Councillor Mike Ratcliffe and um, uh, with the amendments from uh, Councillor Chapman. We all seem to be on the right course and then I started to get a bit confused because there were so many different views. Which clearly there always will be on an issue as serious as this. But the main thrust to me seems to be that we do make some progress as quickly as possible. And if we can agree on that, we might actually make some progress. We can't all have our own individual ideas you know, top of the agenda, because that is the recipe for uh, you know, getting a committee to agree absolutely nothing at all. So we, we, we need to be positive. And I think members who have spoken actually are of that, of, of that view. Um, I'd just like to observe that, you know, uh, practicing what is being preached, uh, to invite you all to Carsington Water <laughs> Ward, where there are, of course, uh, nearly every wind turbine in the whole of Derbyshire Dales, uh, is prominent in, in, in view, and along with solar panels and a, and a huge uh, and very popular natural reservoir. So it, uh, and there is a sort of benefit, which I don't think has actually been sort of maybe isn't appreciated by all, the actual parishes of Brassington and Carsington and Hopton actually do benefit financially um, in, in ways which help them in, enhance their own communities in, in, in positive fashion because they have these wind turbine characters and solar panel characters have to pay money over to the local villages and I think that is commendable uh, because it does help support things that might otherwise not be being supported so well done everybody I'd say um, you know I hope we're getting there yeah thank you and before we end I'll just comment um, from my ward you're welcome to come to my ward and see seven solar installations and a Tesla battery if you'd like to see it um, right just ask Sandra to just clarify what were the, the, the terms that we're voting on <coughs> Thank you, Chair. I think um, you appear to be of one mind and that you have a really powerful motion moving forward which you're about to vote upon. I know that uh, colleagues across the table here have made some suggestions which the Leader has agreed to, but just to give you an assurance that we have made a note of your concerns, which I think will ultimately be part of the consideration of the terms of reference for this group moving forward, so they haven't been forgotten. Sorry, can I, I beg your pardon? Councillor Martin Burford, if, 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 if you could be as brief as you possibly can, I think we're... Yeah. Well, thank you, Chair. Yes, I've been waiting no. all the time. No. Uh, this is the most important just... motion that what Chief Sorry, Councillor Burford hadn't spoken earlier. Sorry. Actually have. Uh, we must uh, commit to immediate action to do something practical rather than what some may call well-meaning rhetoric, which is clearly not sufficient. We need firm commitment now and specific measures which will be taken as a matter of urgency. As others have said on planning, we should put relevant sustainability policies into practice with carbon neutral housing, including sustainability about site choice, layout, materials, solar panels, heat pumps, water harvesting, suds, uh, sustainable uh, uh, drainage schemes, landscaping, accessibility and travel. Solar power should be the basis of, all, of most signage and other powered infrastructure. Vehicle pollution in our towns, and this has not much has been said about this, but more must be done to monitor pollution levels, but we're not doing enough demonstrate the impact of this on the pedestrians in urban areas. 
enhancing public open space uh, with more with measures to increase biodiversity. Like Councillor Fitter, I was regularly supervising tree planting uh, with school children and others 40 years ago in my job. Uh, our council owned land and buildings. Um, energy conservation should be a top priority. There should be incentives for alternatives to oil based fuel, uh, for instance, electric powered car and council vehicles, and the provision of, of charging points, of course. The council must promote local based business use for suitable sites, preferably um, accessible on foot from population centres. Outside the council, surely we should be approaching and putting pressure on our local businesses, especially supermarkets, to drastically reduce their continued use of single use plastic packaging on their shelves. But with little, uh, in fact, I and two other Matlock councillors met at Sainsbury's last year, but with little tangible success. No wonder Sainsbury's are bottom of the supermarket league table for recyclable and compostable packaging. And how much post do we all receive in plastic sleeves compared to biodegradable potato starch based alternatives, which we're getting from some organisations already? It should be universal, I think. Uh, as a landscape architect, I must thank Councillor Chapman for spelling out the raison d'etre for national parks to our Labour colleague behind me. Uh, the Council must urgently consult and engage with local community and neighbouring authorities, as has been said, to establish a, a, a partnership for action. There's no time to waste. I support the further amended motion, but we must take, make dogs to the council carbon user as a, as a matter of urgency. Thank you. Well, if the motion has been moved and seconded. No, you, no, I'm sorry. No, that's it. We've had it now. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. Okay. We're going to thank you very much, Councillor Rankin, for your motion.